Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to the brand new caching mechanism that is being added in .NET with the release of .NET 9. And this new way of doing caching in .NET is the way you should be doing caching. And you might be wondering, wait, I just added the iDistributed Cache interface in my system and I do caching like that. Should I replace that? And the answer is yes. This new caching mechanism is supposed to replace that iDistributed Cache and it can also replace the in-memory cache. So in this video, I'm going to explain what that caching is, how it works, and why you should start using it once .9 is out. If you like a lot of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe for more training. Check out our courses on dontrain.com. Okay, so let me show what I have here. I have a .NET 9 application here, and I'm using .NET 9 Preview 5. However, this is being added in .NET 9 Preview 4. And let me just show you what this API is doing. So all I have is an API that gets the weather. But instead of just getting it through a hard-coded in-memory array, what I'm doing here is I'm calling a real API to get the current weather based on the city name. So if I run this API just to show you how it works, all I'm doing is I'm saying, oh, give me the weather for London. And I'm getting the weather and it's cloudy, what a surprise. Uh, and then I can say, for example, give me the weather for Paris. And this is the current weather because I'm using an API through my API to get that weather. And then I'm just returning it in a nice response. And that's it. Now, here's the problem. Since my API is calling another API, I don't want to have to call that API for the weather every single time someone is calling my API because the weather doesn't really change that often. Okay, yeah, it is London, so it might, but let's say we can cache it for like five or 10 minutes, and that not only makes my API faster, but it also removes a potential point of failure to calling that other API. And also, that API I'm calling is rate limited. So after n amount of requests per minute, it's going to start failing, so I can save some of that rate by caching that response per city. And many of you might say, okay, I know how to do this. All I'm going to do is I'm going to say builder.services.addMemoryCache and you're going to add the very well known at this point in memory cache using the read-only iMemoryCache interface. We're going to inject that over here and then we're going to change this a bit. And by that, I mean, we're going to take this code out and we're going to move it to a separate method. Then we're going to create a cache key to differentiate each response based on its city. And then we're going to say the weather is memory cache dot get or create async. So we're going to get the response from the cache if it exists with this cache key. If it doesn't, this is a method you should use to set the value of the cache. And that's it. Now, what I want to do is quickly add a breakpoint here and here. And I want to debug this to show you how it works. So let's go ahead now again and call the weather and let's say give me the weather for London here we go so London comes in our cache key is weather London I'm calling that get or create async method and that means I will call the get weather async method because I didn't have it in the cache already so that all happened and I have my response now if I call it again now and let's go ahead and do that as you're going to see as I step over I am not going in the get weather async method because I already had it in the cache as you can probably see over here, I have one thing here with this key, as you can see here, and then I have all the items and so on. So I was able to return from the cache and save that request. Really, really nice and very, very simple for in-memory scenarios. However, this method, the get or create async, has a bit of an issue. If I go ahead and I run it again, what I'm going to do is I'm going to call this endpoint twice. So I'm going to call it from the London here, but I'm also going to call it from this second tab over here. So I have two requests going on and I'll do step over and I'm going to say get the weather, but I also going to get, as you can see here, the other request in here. It comes in and then I have one request in the get weather async and I'm going to start stepping over. But look, I stayed on the same row, which means a second request. Now both requests are getting that value from the cache, but at the same time. So I find two requests, and even though eventually this was sent and it was cached, with this get or create async, I don't have thread safety. This is not an atomic operation, meaning many things can come here at the same time. And I also have a second problem, which is even if I do set that value, when it expires, let's say I have 100 requests per second in my application, well, there can be a stampede happening when that thing expires because all of them will come in at the same time. And if a request takes two to three seconds to get the weather from that other API, 
all of those requests will go and spam with other API and there could be issues with that. There are ways around it with locking or spreading this to multiple operations, but it is a bit of a problem that not many people know. Now, before I move on, I'd like to let you know that we just launched a brand new course on Dome Trend called Getting Started with GraphQL in .NET. And it's a very special course because it is authored by Michael Steib, the creator of Hot Chocolate, which is the library that people use to create GraphQL APIs. So you're getting the best experience possible on the subject. Not only that, but Michael is working with Microsoft quite a bit because Microsoft is using Hot Chocolate internally for their own GraphQL APIs. And he's also part of the steering committee for GraphQL, not just for .NET, but for the technology itself, which means that he's responsible alongside other people to decide which feature goes into GraphQL and which doesn't. It is the best course on GraphQL in .NET. I can't stress this enough. And the first 300 of you can use a discount code GraphQL20 at checkout to get 20% off. Now back to the video. Now that is fine for in-memory caching, but what if my application is distributed? Well, I can't use the in-memory cache because if I have a distributed application where I run multiple instances of it to scale it out, well, the problem then becomes that each instance will have its own cache and the responses might show a bit of a different weather for that given period of time. So that's where the I distributed cache interface come into picture. So what I can do is I can add a distributed cache in my system, in this case, Redis, which is very, very popular. And I can do that by going in NuGet and saying Microsoft.extensions.caching.stack.exchange Redis. I'm going to go ahead and just install that. Here we go. And then the program.cs, instead of add memory cache, I'm going to say builder.services.add stack exchange Redis cache, and that will automatically wire up the I distributed cache interface. I'm going to pass down some options. All I need here is the connection string, and I do have a Redis instance running already, so I'm able to see my Redis cache here, as you can see on this tab. So I'm going to go here and say that this is localhost, and then I think the endpoint is this. In fact, I have it in this Docker Compose file. Here we go, paste it here. And that's that. So all I need to do now is replace this I memory cache thing with the I distributed cache, private read only I distributed cache. Here we go. And then replace this code. Now, if you've used this I distributed cache, you would know that it doesn't have this operation that both things happen at the same time. So you have to get first and then set, you can't get and create. So your code would look like this, where we get the string. If it is null, then we have to get the weather, then we set it, and then we return the weather. Again, this thing suffers from the exact same problem, which is stampedes can happen, and that can cause multiple requests firing off to that API. But the benefit is that I now have a distributed cache, and if I go here and I say, given the weather for London, then I'm going to get the weather, but I'm also going to put it in Redis. So you can see it here. The weather is now cached in Redis in a distributed way. And everyone who wants to use that cache can go here and they will get it from the exact same location, ensuring that there's no difference between whoever cached it and whoever returned it. And that is fine, but it does suffer from both some pit protection and then eviction problems. In fact, I disliked it so much, I never use it in production. I always use the Redis interface directly because of how poor this interface was. The gaps we currently have is no stampede protection. There is no simple pass through methods like the ones we had in the memory cache. So the get or create async. There is no multi tiering option, which means that if I have a distributed cache, then I can use it. But otherwise, just fall back and use an in memory cache and the two have the exact same interface. So there's none of that. And then things like tag based eviction that we got with the new output caching that was added in the previous .NET versions and also instrumentation, but that's more of a quality of life thing. It's not so much a must have. So .NET 9 Preview 4 introduces a brand new cache called hybrid cache. And that's the one you should replace your IDC with a cache. And I would argue your in memory cache as well, because now you can have the exact same thing for both. And if you want to plug a distributed caching mechanism like Redis, you still can. So I'm going to go ahead and just clear Redis over here. And then I'm going to go to NuGet and then I'm going to search for Microsoft extensions caching and then hybrid. And it's this one over here. So I'm going to go ahead and install it. And I'm going to remove this yucky distributed caching thing. So that goes away. And then I'm going to go to the program.cs. I'm going to comment this ad for now. And I'm going to say builder.services.add hybrid cache. That's that. Simple enough. Of course, you can customize everything. So you have the option. So you can say uh, options dot and you have plenty of configurations here. But I'm going to just leave it 
as it is. And then I'm going to go here and inject it. And this is not an interface. They chose to go with a class. So this is the hybrid class here that you need to inject. And as you can see, there's no hybrid cache interface. They chose to go with an abstract class. So you will be using that. Of course, being abstract, it means it is mockable. So it's still testable. And the benefit of this is that, as you can see over here, we still have the get or create async. So that single pass through mechanism and then remove async, remove by tag async. So you can tag your cache entries and they will be evicted all at the same time. And then the set async, if you just want to set the value, very simple, very straightforward very powerful and the good thing is i can just use the original code from the memory cache and it will work so it will look something like this here we go so this is the exact same thing i had in the beginning of the video before it was the memory cache now it is the hybrid cache very very nice but here's the interesting thing i'm not going to wire up any distributed thing on this hybrid cache and by default it's going to be in memory so if i go ahead and i just run it now it will act like an in memory cache so i'll go back to insomnia and i'm going to call that endpoint and of course it's going to come in get it and it's going to get from the cache and then cache it and return it so the next request will not have to call the api very nice but if i restart the application and i call it twice at the same time watch what happens so first request comes here and then go here second request comes here so two requests in here i'm gonna go step over and as you can see second one came in but only one went in this get weather async there is stampede protection built in and your requests won't step over each other and both enter whatever is happening in your caching method that is now protected and you don't have to worry about it. This is probably the biggest upgrade over the in-memory cache is why I'm saying you should use this even if you're doing it in memory because it just simplifies things so, so much. But if you want to turn this hybrid cache into an in-memory cache, all you have to do is just wire up the stack exchange with the exact same method as you had before. And that's it. And now, Everything is handled by hybrid cache. And if I go here, I have nothing on Redis. As you can see, if I refresh, it is empty. But if I go ahead and I fire again, let's fire two requests. So I'm going to fire one here and another one here. So two of them, I'm going to step over, go here. As you can see, only one of them is getting in here. This will get the weather and set it, but both of them will return it and if i go in redis you're going to see that it automatically cached this for me very neat very nice and that's the way forward so everything from now on should be using this of course the benefit of this is also that you can have tag based eviction so if you have a cache entry you can tag it in some way but you can also set of course the expiration and all that but also flags so you can have compression and you can disable it if you want you can disable distributed caching for a specific entry so if you want to cache something you can say this shouldn't go in the distributed cache keep this in memory then you can disable the local cache the in-memory cache there's plenty of ways you can customize this cache through these entry flags it's really really neat it's really really nice and if you want to pass tags all you have to do is this in fact i should be able to do this and say this is the weather or i can tag it in any other way and then in my hybrid cache i can say uh, remove by tag async and the tag i can pass down is weather and then remove something by tag like this there's so many places you can take this but from now on and moving forward that's the thing you should be using from dotnet 9 onwards with your caching in dotnet i know it's confusing because we have so many caches and why didn't microsoft just fix the interface and just made a new one well the idea is that now the i distributed cache is a back-end sort of internal thing that they will be using behind the scenes and we get the hybrid cache the one that should rule them all in a way it's a bit confusing, but I'm glad at least that they added it because the previous caching attempts did feel very lackluster. So finally it is fixed. But now I want to know from you, what do you think about this? And what do you think about Microsoft's opinion to make it a class instead of an interface? And also the idea of adding it as an extra thing instead of just fixing what was already there. Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I have for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. And as always, keep coding.